The America's Cup is like the Formula One of boat racing. Fast, ultra competitive, but with all of the power coming from the wind. And the boats don't so much sail as fly. Relatively small foils underneath the vessels act like wings that help to lift the entire hull out of the water and massively reduce drag. Yeah, well, I learned to sail, God, you know, 35 years ago or something. I take myself back to that eight-year-old kid thinking about the boats that we're sailing in now, doing speeds over 50 knots, you know, 65 miles an hour. I just think that's absolutely nuts. Here in Portsmouth, Olympic champion Sir Ben Ainsley's team is designing one of the five boats that will race next March. Now, the America's Cup has a weird rule, and that is that whoever wins the event gets to decide all of the rules for the next one. Now, I'm not just talking about the location and the date or even how many heats there are. They get to dictate the type of boat that's used and the number of sailors you can have on board. So basically, every America's Cup requires teams to design a new boat from scratch. In this case, the previous winners, Oracle New Zealand, have chosen, guess where, New Zealand as the location. They've switched from a two-hulled catamaran to a single-hulled boat, and they've made a host of other rule changes. One of the big changes in this cup with regards to the rules was that we're not allowed to do any physical testing, so we can't test in the wind tunnel or the tow tank. So all the testing has been done in the simulated world in computational fluid dynamics on machines. Max Starr is part of the team who've tested many, many virtual boat designs, repeatedly building and rebuilding them in software to try and improve their performance in the water and in the air. So INEOS Team UK have a big mathematical problem to solve, which is simulating all of the air conditions and the hydrodynamic conditions on the yacht as it sails through the water under an insane number of different scenarios to simulate what happens when water strikes the hull of a yacht or when the air hits the sail of a yacht. We pixelate those surfaces. We put little square pixels all over that yacht. At each one of those pixels we do a little bit of math. We understand what the temperature pressure and, and forces are that are acting there. Then we can work out what's going to happen next and how that how that cascades all the way down the line to the next pixel and the next pixel and the next pixel. And suddenly we've got an idea of what a real living boat is going to look like when it's in the water in race conditions. And the more detailed your simulation is, the more pixels that you can break your boat into, the more accurate your model becomes. But every single pixel is simulated by a different computer processor, which means you need a massive amount of computing. Basically, you need to harness the power, not of the wind, but of the cloud. Now, the crew do get to test how the virtual designs handle. This simulator knows exactly how the current design will behave when under the control of a master sailor. So, let's see how it does with me. Oh, we're sailing. We're sailing. So, wow, one of the foils has gone into the water. And then, once we're around there, if you just go hard right and down, that's it. It's got a little bit slower at the time and you fell off the foils. Oops, we seem to have sunk. I'm going to guess though that that's user error and not a problem with the boat. It's not all about design, of course. The sailors are at the top of their game. All of them need to be in peak physical form. And that's the job of Head of Human Performance, Ben Williams, who also uses data. This time captured by Garmin watches to monitor the fitness regime and try and find the best mix of training and rest. What I'm interested in is how much training they have done, how their body's adapting to that training, and how much recovery they need to harvest that training stimulus. People think that you get fit from training. You don't, you get fit from recovering from training. So the training is the stress, once you put a stress on the body, your body will adapt to be able to cope with that stress, but only when we recover from that stress. And you might be wondering, how fit do you really have to be to be a sailor? Well, now here's something I didn't know about sailing. 
it used to be the case that if you wanted to move the sail or an appendage on a boat, you would turn the winch as and when you needed to. But modern boats are so powerful that the only way you can move something like the sail is using hydraulics or batteries. But here's the thing, the only way you're allowed to recharge the battery is by doing that. It's called grinding, and eight sailors, all built like brick ship houses, do this for the whole of each race to keep those batteries charged. Yes, of course I'm going to have a go, and of course it's going to go well. Okay, we'll just get you a bit of load on first and sort that out. <laughs> so we'll be, doing, we'll be doing this for the duration of the race, yeah. Hopefully a few more watts than that. Oh. But, um, all right. Do you want to turn that up then? Yeah, where do you want it to be? Go all the way up to what you get. Alright. So we'll be... We'll... Ah! There you go. Ah! How can you do this at all, ever? <laughs> what is fascinating about this sport is that it's not like Formula One. Here, every boat can be really, really different. It's a massive unknown and there's no tried and tested formula for success. How quickly do you think you'll be able to tell whether you've got it right or whether someone else has got the better boat? We'll, we'll know within the first five minutes. We've got a race in December, Christmas race, which is kind of a warm up to the, to the series itself. And pretty quickly in that, we'll know whether we've got it right or wrong. 